people. I declare the spirit of revelation granted to you. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. You will testify. In Jesus' mighty name of our prayer. Can you celebrate Jesus wherever you are? Glory to God. Thank you very much, choir. Thank you. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Just look at the person by your left and right. Tell them it's good to be in church. I'm excited that I am here. Even if you're not excited, that one is a prophetic word. Just say I'm excited. By the time we're done with service, you will be excited. God will put a new song in your mouth. It will cause you to sing the song of praise. In the name of Jesus. I just feel convinced again in my heart. I see a person again, tears wiped off. It's something that has bothered you long ago. This thing I'm talking about is something that has become a serious issue that you are worried about, you're troubled about. And I just see God, see you kneeling down. I see you take a position where you're kneeling down and you were crying. You wanted to pray, but you could not pray. You were just crying. You were just pouring out your heart. You wanted to express in words, but it was not, there was nothing to say and you were just pouring out your heart. And all of a sudden, a mighty hand just came and picked you up and said, enough. God is wiping away the tears of people. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, we've got not um, so much of time. We've not got so much of time this morning. And uh, we're going to be rounding off our Navigate series. It's six weeks. Six weeks of divine revelation. Six weeks of destiny impartation. Six weeks of information for transformation. How many of us have been part of it for the six weeks? You never missed any part of it. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. It's been powerful. And you can testify to that, can't we? Very good. So today we're rounding up the series uh, and um, I will just say one or two things then I'll pick up from the fifth, um, the sixth stage and the seventh stage. Then I said I was going to share a scripture with us last week. I've not forgotten. I have two scriptures that are very strong. For many people, those scriptures will dawn on you. You know when something dawns on you, it's not like, wow. Like I never saw it like that. I never knew that this was exactly how uh, this scripture is and for the next one i'm going to share one other scripture towards the end probably it will be like a, a a new revelation to you to see concerning god's purpose for your life are we here together so when we started the teaching series do, do we have that diagram now of the state of the ladder joseph can i get it do we have that diagram now no diagram okay okay it is well so we we started and i started talking about the stages of life somebody says stages of life and the theme is understanding and maximizing the seasons of your life. And we tagged it Navigate. And when we started the series, I said that we're going to look at from life's first breath to its final call. Are we here together? And we've looked at the point where we've gotten to middle age, mid, middle age as it were. The people have different definitions of middle age. Some people believe that middle age is between 50 to 60. Some people believe that it's just starting at 65, depending on the life expectancy of a particular region so in my definition of middle age for some people middle age might be 45 you know and 50 but for some people middle age is not that it's somewhere around 60 that 120 is the thing so 60 should be middle age are we here together yes so i i, I tried to so i said from the age of zero please follow me carefully i'm rounding up today so that any person who listens to this one you won't you may you won't be able to get the full thing but you have a summary of everything than the last two so you will go back to the media on the website we now have all the messages uploaded there do we joseph yes we have all the messages uploaded on the website part one part two part three part four is a six part series so today is the last one so i said from zero to when a child is about 10 years old that the real investment that should be made in the life of that child is investment in what what values values are important values are the things that you treasure values are the building blocks of a person's destiny and i said that in those values many values can be instilled in a child between the ages of zero to ten but i emphasized obedience because it was the first problem our father had in the garden of eden adam disobeyed god 
and I emphasize teach children the import of disobedience what disobedience can cause the results of what men face on the face of the earth now how that it came as a result of disobedience then I said number two is responsibility if they learn to be responsible early enough in life they'll be responsible in their marriages they'll be responsible working with their bosses they'll be responsible taking care of their siblings they'll be responsible to do house chores and learn the things they need to learn early enough in life then finally I talked about delayed gratification the child must know that you cannot get everything you want to get just at the time you want to get it am i talking sense church now the child must know that there are certain foods you want to eat and mommy says no no is word no so that when the child grows up to an extent and people say no the child will not say why i start fighting he knows that not everything you want to get as it were at that moment you can get so if people are having issues with saying no to drugs no to alcohol no to sexual promiscuity no to greed it means that they were not taught foundationally to delay their gratification you know what it means now delayed gratification to get now to be able to say i can get it later i can work it i can plan for it i can build a business i can build an investment instead of hijacking somebody's business or investment because i want the money now are we here together now so if a child is taught between the ages of 0 and 10, delayed gratification, it's easier for that child to learn how to say no early enough in life. The girl can say no to sexual advances. The guy can say no to opportunities to misbehave. He can say no to fraudulent things because he has learned that you should delay gratification and work. Somebody say work. Can you say loud work? Then I said from the ages of 11 to 25, and Now you are learning from peers, people you are growing up with. You are learning from school and you are learning a lot of things. If your foundation was properly laid, if society is giving you the wrong information, based on the early foundation of your values, integrity, obedience, love, delayed gratification, you'll be able to say no because it doesn't align with my word values. So within the ages of 11 to 25, you're learning. But what you're learning from your peers will be largely dependent on the kind of people you're associating yourself with. If you're associating with the wrong people, you'll be learning what? The wrong things. If you're associating with the right people, you'll be learning what? The right things. So at that stage, you should be learning. You are learning. You've gone to school. You must serve as an apprentice. Somebody say apprentice. At that point, you, you know, you, you're trying to learn many things. You're just observing from school. You're observing from people. You're learning how to make good quality friends. Between the ages of 11 and 25, if you have good and quality friends, marriage will not be difficult. Looking for business partners will not be difficult because the people you grew up with the same values, you can do business and nobody is running away or cheating anybody. These are my friends. These are the people we grew up with. But if the people you grew up with were, are the people in the negative and in the reverse, you'll be looking for quality people when you should have found them between 11 to 25. So if you're in school, in university, who are your friends? Who are the people you are relating with? Are they the kind of people that can be future are they the kind of people that are looking forward to having beautiful homes happy marriages those that are looking forward to have a beautiful and a wealthy prosperous life or those that are looking for just anyhow life goes you must be very careful i talked about the schooling stage then i talked about the second stage which is the, the third stage which is the stage I said that is between the ages of about 25 to what? 35. I said within that time, you should have discovered that one thing you want to do with your life. Paul said, this one thing I do. Forgetting all the things that are behind, I press on towards the man. Why? You will need some years of doing one thing before you become perfect in that thing and become a master at that thing. So many times, because people have not focused early enough in life, if you don't focus early enough in life on one thing, as you start growing, something begins to tell you that you are too old to do this kind of job. You are too old to start again. You are too, so it's better you start again. Stand at so I'm saying that that age is not a fixed age as it were, but it's a guide. Are we here together now? So you focus and say, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to grow with this organization now that I am 25 or 26. I will be in this organization for the next 15 to 20 years of my life. I will build investments. I will do work. I will, I will do all manner of things. I want to work with the government, with the civil service or something. You must focus on one thing. The earlier you focus, the better. Are we here together, church? So I showed us in Ecclesiastes, the Bible says, to everything there is what? 
a season and a time to every purpose under heaven so that some people have missed strategic times and seasons of their life but that's why again i believe we're in the month of restoration because god is about to restore he's about to shake things and bring everything that is foundationally wrong bring them to place for you in the name of jesus we moved from that stage the apprentices and i said that, that before you start up your business organization is very fine you need to serve with a boss that's going to train you and send you for it's not a formal schooling it's very fine serve why when you apprentice with people you learn the trade you learn the arts those days people don't go to law school to become lawyers they apprentice they serve under people who are lawyers already and eventually after some years they'll write the exam and they become lawyers too those days they didn't have some kind of formal organizations or institutions they had people learning under people to become whatever they wanted to become in life but today a lot of people don't want to learn under people and if they start within the next two years they feel they have known everything their boss knows they carry their bag they run we must not be like that there is a generation that is a generation of rushing and running and just doing things anyhow we must stop that or else we'll have a people who are not well baked who are not cooked who are not ready to face the adversities and the challenges of life because i can tell you the staggering truth life is truly full of challenges many but because you understand your god is as if you are not seeing them but you know that you are seeing them but you you refuse to agree when you know God. Am I making sense here now? We talked about the next stage and I said that is the stage between the ages of what? 35 to what? 45. I said that stage is not ordinarily, it's not the stage where you start thinking of how to start. You should have been building on what you already what started. Because people between the ages of 35 to 45, they are now the people who have started a level of mentorship for the other people coming. Where they can listen to you, people can hear what you're saying, because you have spent about 10 years focusing on something, is that not? So if I see a lawyer who is 10 years, or a doctor, 10 years post-call, or a medical doctor, or an engineer, or a businessman who has done business, business for 10 years I think it should have some kind of experience am I making sense here now so within that time the business should have stabilized things should have started coming you know marriage should be setting in for some people it's between 25 and 35 is that not majority of people marriage is setting in children and coming into the scene you're beginning to take care of your parents responsibility begins to dawn on you that they usually pay house rent begins to dawn on you that you have to buy paste by yourself begins to dawn on you that every time there's nobody you come and say give me money no life is beginning to tell you that there's a time where you eat bread there's a time where you sow seeds it gives seed to the sower bread to the eater at the early stage of your life you are eaters of bread children are So God will give you bread to eat because you cannot sow seed, you cannot cultivate, you cannot harvest, just be eating, eating. But as you begin to grow, God now gives you seed so that from the seed you can produce bread and give people bread. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody. Glory to Jesus. So we move there and we start talking between the ages of 35 to 40. and credibility people are beginning to look at you and you know they're beginning to believe in you the more challenges are also around that area we shared some of the challenges of that stage of life is that not we said people should be careful of what they start eating because your health is important you drink like a Sarah that they used to lose boats and not that is in the car La Sarah. look at the name La sorry come if you pay me i'll advertise in a different way don't worry so when you drink that you don't know what is happening to your liver your lungs you drink three bottles of coke in a day with um, shawarma and um, you do some donuts burger you're doing half of the cake is sugar the other half is cake and you eat all of them and you're saying this life is sweet to brothers and sisters <laughs> beware because the evil days are coming where your legs and your hands will begin to tell what you have caused them to labor on so what are we saying early enough you learn that there's a season of your life where you cut on some of the things that you eat i don't eat this anymore some of you know the families you're from i'm a born again i'm a christian of course sicknesses cannot hold me down i believe that but wisdom is profitable to do what direct your father probably had hypertension your mother had hypertension your mother had diabetes and you are following the track of drinking coca-cola every day it's foolishness pure foolishness it is simple wisdom for you to just know that i can escape all these things if I stop certain things and start eating certain things, my life will start shifting. 
what a 10 year old boy eats is not what a 35 year old 40 year old man or 50 year old man should be eating the life is different are we here together are we getting what i'm saying here now so you must understand I'm not, I'm not going back to all those stages so i talked about the stage which is between the ages of 45 to what 55 did, did i talk about that last week already and i said at that stage this the challenges of this stage they also start showing from 45 health begins to show some things you need to cut on things you eat then at that stage you are now taking care of your grandparents your parents full responsibility you are probably now having people that they have attached to you as your personal responsibility i'm not making sense right now so at this stage people see you as an experienced man 45 to 55 uh -uh. nobody knows that if you want to look for counsel and advice go to that person at that stage you are not giving people counsel and advice based on what you read in a book you are giving them counsel and advice based on your experience so they usually will say that you know that means that a little child cannot have more rags than what an adult that means an adult will have more rags rags represent what experience at that time the adult is telling you see what we have seen see what we have known they are telling you how the biafran bomb sounded and you are shouting everywhere there must be what they say you, 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 don't talk what this generation if they say there is what if they start the word they will jack back but the adult is saying we had bombs we had heavy bombs everywhere please avoid war based on experience they are saying this is not what we want to see anymore at medical level you also experience that you want those kind of doctors to teach you they are more experienced say ah, i don't want somebody that is my body to be experimental yeah because you believe that at that level so i balanced it by saying wisdom is actually not in age of days but there's a spirit in man by the spiritual romance that gives him what wisdom so certain people who relate in cordial fellowship with the ancient of days can have the experiences that god has seen in the life of other people shared personally with them so they can also become dispensers of knowledge are we here together church now so you must understand that balance then today i want to talk about the next stage and um, that's where I'm going to be rounding off the two last stages. What I just did now is a full sermon that I have compressed in 10 15 minutes. So don't think you have known it all. No, 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 no. Now, I don't assume. I don't assume. You came into the class when the lecturer was teaching 10 minutes in the end of the class, and he said that thing will come out in exam. I say, hey, I was there. You are not there. The things that precede that thing he said, go and listen to them. Those are the things that will give you the final answer. Are we here together, church? So you may need to listen to it again. So we have successfully discussed five stages of a leader's life. Today we'll be discussing the sixth and the seventh stage. The sixth stage is called representation stage. It is between the ages of... Some things about this stage. Like I said, from 45, many things are common with the people at that level. People in this stage generally exhibit the characteristics of those between 45 and 55. But in a more... Those in the previous stage, they have greater experience and increased credibility. Greater experience and increased credibility. People at this stage have more wisdom and lesser strength to drive their vision. So they have more wisdom. They have made many mistakes. They now know what, they know how things should be done. But their body is not giving them the ability to drive with the way they should drive. So if they had done the proper work of 45, uh, of, of So, is that what I talk about? That one of the things you do is start building social those that you're going to hand over, those you're training, that can run your business, that can run your organization. That can run your, if they do it very well, at that stage, they'll be sitting with people, pouring wisdom, and tell them, use your strength to drive this wisdom. Businesses will still work. Things will still be happening. Why? They have increased wisdom, lesser strength. Increased wisdom, lesser strength. Are we here together, church? So, you see that each generation must be dependent on the other one for effectiveness am i making sense here now yes so the challenges of this season are very similar to that of the last stage like i said physical challenges decrease in physical strength health challenges especially common to those who refuse to pay attention to their health by exercising and eating right it is never too late to start now please i'm saying this because it is when you have life that you can run vision it's when you have life and your health that you can run anything if your life and the health is gone there's hardly anything that you can do again so it is possible to understand that the soul, the spirit, and the body has to find strong balance. From the beginning, I said it, your spiritual man has to be sound and sensitive. If your mind has to be well informed because information is the baseline for transformation. You are a well informed person. Don't live in the dark. Don't be an old school. Don't... Things that are gone. 
know what is happening in the time, then your body also needs a proper balance. Said things like that. So dizziness, headaches, you know, bones and joints. People are complaining about uh, what they call that thing, arthritis. Their body's weight is becoming large, so that you know, and all that because the body weight is becoming large because you are not doing much work, you are not burning much energy, and all that. So for some people, hypertension, coronary heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and many things start setting in. Remember, I said many times because they neglect the things they ought to have done at the previous stage. It is not that because you are growing old, everybody has to be sick. Is a lie. And thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he will bless your bread and your water. There is wisdom in the Bible that says, body there says, size profited what? Little. You can't compare yourself with the people of those days. They go to farm, they walk, many exercises has already covered up, all their joints are working. But these days, people don't exercise, they don't walk, they relax in one place, and they expect to get the same results. It won't work like that. Those days, they eat the right food, they eat things that are very natural, they eat pure things, they get better health. I'm not talking sense right now, but in these days, we eat preserved food, we eat things that are already, they're not supposed, the chemicals that are used to preserve the things we eat are the chemicals that kill people slowly and gradually. So in other words, people eat to die instead of eat food as medicine. Your food can be medicine every day. I'm not going there. Emotional challenges, decrease in the testosterone leads to weaker muscles for the Push hard with specific tasks. And you know, they are no longer as competent within the ages of 55 and 65. Strength is no longer so much, you know, at their disposal the way they would have expected. Women also find diminished, a little bit of diminishing self-esteem. Why? Because you're no longer as attractive as you used to be. Nobody's doing the hazy and the hoosy. You know, you used to feel high, you know, but now everywhere is just there. Everything is flat tires. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you just know that. You just have to encourage yourself that what your self-esteem is not in your physical body. So you see all those that are building energy here, building energy here. At the end of the day, it's a spire. Build energy here. Build energy here. Build energy in the spirit. At that age, you can be a spiritual guide to your children. They want to do things and they say, mommy, pray because they know mommy can see. Mommy can hear. They want wisdom in certain areas. Say, How did you navigate that area? You give them experience. You give them exposure. You give them wisdom. Why? Because you have more than physical beauty. The Bible says, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. She shall be praised. I'm saying this especially to women because many women just become total nothing again in the house. You are finished giving birth to children. Eh? You don't even have energy to do what you should do again. Eh? Housemaid has taken over and start cooking. Eh? What is your value? So your value is now your spiritual strength. The man is going out and you're decreeing some prayers. And he comes back and says, honey, you know that prayer you prayed? Say, yeah, it's working. He wants to do some things. And it's from your experience, you are sharing things with your daughters, with your sons. And they say, wow. So at 70, you are looking sweet and green. They are looking beyond your wrinkles and they are seeing within your wisdom. Very important. Because many people lose their self-esteem at that stage of their life. Because they are no longer valuable to the world. They are not adding value anymore to anybody. Are we here together, church? Praise God. So all things being equal, the most important thing for people at this stage is to focus on leveraging their credibility to resource their vision. I will explain what that means. Leverage your credibility. So I said within the ages of 55 to 65, somebody has a lot of wisdom. Somebody has learned many things. You have built an organization. You have built a system. You have done so much. You are supposed to take advantage of your credibility, the faith that people have in you and what you have achieved in life to help your successors to grow the vision. Let me explain now. Listen to this. We said that between 45 to 55, people should start raising their successors. Is that not? But the responsibility at the... On taking the whole of that wisdom, the respect people have for you in the society, how you have built your business, how you have coordinated your life, you now push your successors forward. When you push them forward and they mention your name, your name starts opening doors. So you're no longer working so much, but your name begins to open doors at that stage. They say, where are you coming from? They say, I'm coming from social office. Uh, who sent you? They say, Mr. Oh, 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 what a wonderful man. Have you been working with him? Yes, sir. I'm the one in charge now. I'm the director of operations of the company. I'm the manager of the company. I'm the director of the company right now. He, he just retired two years ago. Wow, we be, when your boss was there, he was such an outstanding man. He had a man of credibility. Please, what, what do you want? What exactly do you want? And they pulled it from, and they, before they talked, they signed it. 
Why? The credibility of a person who has walked over the years is now speaking for the next generation. So imagine that in ministry that I need to do, somebody needs to do crusade in a particular area and there's a man who has come there 15, 20 years ago and liberated all the people there, did massive things. So his son in the faith that has taken over the ministry is coming now and wants to do crusade here. Immediately you come and say, ah, I, am, I was sent by social person. Ah, wow, you people are welcome. But somebody that comes without any name, no, no, they say, what, what, what's your name? Where are you coming from? Who sent you? How? Why? The person who has done much work is leveraging on his credibility I get what I'm saying now. To help the next generation push. Because your strength will not be there to do those things anymore. But when they hear your name, it should resound. Are we here together, church? I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning. Yes. So while you focus on mentoring between 45 to 55, here you are raising, you are now mentors of other people who are coming behind. So you are, you are a mentor of mentors at that stage of your life. At this stage, the leader should be able to hands off the activities of the day-to-day -day running of the business, of the organization, of the work, and watch it happen. Just watch everything happen. The leader should leverage credibility to resource the vision. And listen to this. To leverage credibility is to resource the vision. To resource the vision is to take advantage of your position, your trust that you have earned over the years, goodwill over the years, your network of relationships that you have gathered over the years. To help your successors do more than you could have done by yourself so while you are aging the vision is looking fresh everything is still looking fresh am i talking sense to somebody this morning so your name should be able to open doors and grant access to people somebody wants to start a particular business and baby dangote hands over he says i'm coming from social place dangote group i'm the new blah, blah, blah. the bank will not wait too much dangote group eh? they don't even want to ask you the only is that as far as it is what Dangote group, we need a loan of about 50 million to execute this project. These are all the things. Just they now show precedence. The last time we collected the loan, we paid like this, we paid like this, we paid like this. Who made all those things happen? One man who was behind the scene has opened doors to the next generation. Can I pray for somebody that in time to come, your name will open doors for people? In time to come, the labors that you have done on earth, people will stand on it and they will climb higher in life. There are places your children will enter, your grandchildren, and they won't do interview. Lady, they enter, they say, whose son are you? He says, person. He said, don't worry, we already secured a job for you. Why? Because your father was the one that raised the new director of this company. So they say, you can go ahead and work. So you're looking for an intern, everybody's submitting paper and paper everywhere. Your own is called, hello? Daddy, won't you send him again? Yes, that your grandchild. He just finished school. I, I'm, we are, our company wants him. Did you beg for it? No. Did you labor for it? No. Trust! and credibility built over the years has now become key to open doors so when people are living their lives anyhow you see that they are not seeing the future they are not seeing that certain things they do now can close door for their children their children fighting quarreling spoiling things destroying things so children grow up to a hard life all doors are shut why they say your father if it is by what your father did, as we see you, we should bond you and just throw you away. But anyway, you can just leave, but we cannot help you. Are we here together? Paul did that. He wanted them to raise some funds for the church. And he just wrote a letter. He wrote a letter to the church and told them they should raise funds. Do the thing. And they said, if it's Brad Paul that wrote the letter, we will do what? Raise the funds. They raised all the funds and they sent it through the hand of other people and they were disbursing things to the church. Why? The credibility of Paul days where he came and he told them did i eat your money no did i use your money to buy a cap myself they say no say okay please we want to raise money for this church brother silas and this person they are coming please and everybody said yes sir why the man has credibility and trust are we here together church are you sure you're getting it so when we wanted to do 20 days of glory something happened when i was telling the, the pastor Yamid, david that i was going to come from a church and he asked me a question he said who has come for the program before who has ministered in your church before and i said ah sir so so person has ministered in our church before we do he said hey. now he had to look at where i am coming from and the people that are behind the people that know what i am doing and can stand for me and he said okay no problem we're going to make it happen if i started calling nothing nobody you must have ladders that you are climbing on there are people that you will mention and they'll say, okay, no problem. If those are the people you're talking about. Yeah, okay, no problem. Well, this person say yes, was there. Can you send me flowers? I sent flowers. Said, wow, wow. So what was the church about? I said, this is it. Before you say, okay, no problem. Uh, that date, let's fix the date. And before you know it, you also build relationship on that platform. 
you now build relationships. So you see, my, my network is increasing gradually. So there are certain places I cannot access now. The simple reason is because there's somebody I need to be a door. As soon as I get that person who will be my door, the other doors will open. Men are doors. Be wise. Are we here together, church? So because of the track record and integrity, quality relationships built over the years, a leader gives ladder to his successors to climb. Dispense wisdom. Do less physical work. These are the things of this stage. Do mental work. Consult. Mentor. Lead leaders. One of the factors that make it difficult for leaders at this stage to do what I'm talking about. Can I tell you some of the factors? Before we move to the next one. Number one, inability to achieve the required results at that stage. So if the results you should have acquired at that stage, you did not acquire it, you won't be a door. Probably be a window. And when you come through a window, you are a thief. It's because you did not do what should make you a door. So that's why I'm saying it's not too late for somebody to start thinking and saying, I have to do what will make me a door. My name will open doors. It doesn't, it's not by money. This is not by money. Sometimes a gate man that served somebody well for 25 years, his son can get access to a company to do a bigger job who has studied. Why? Because he was faithful. Just a gate man. He was faithful as a gate man. He was faithful as a gate man. And now his son has graduated and he wants a good job somewhere. And somebody says, ah, Baba, no mommy, OT, he has got, he said, eh? Well, let him come. And the boy is talking and the man is looking at the boy and he's seen an advanced version of his father. And he said, this is the thing I'm talking about. I would have helped that man, but he didn't have what it takes to be helped beyond being a gate man. But now his son has gathered the skill, the knowledge, the expertise. I will move his generation to the next phase. So somebody might be thinking, I say, and I'm money, now pass it. No, not about the money. Credibility is not about money. Goodwill is not about money. It's about your faithfulness in service over the period of time. Am I talking sense to somebody here now? Yes. So if you fail to build quality foundational values, you fail to serve and acquire knowledge through experience, you fail to discover God's purpose and build quality relationships, you fail to focus on one particular thing and be strong at it in life, you didn't provide any solution, how would you now be a door? If you didn't provide any solution, you didn't provide any service, you didn't do anything that is worthwhile, at that stage of life, you now see some people at that stage, you are wondering that, why is this man at this stage begging? I've seen people who are 70 and you and I know that a 70 year old person cannot secure any house. That is just a point to get food to do what? Eat. Is what we call strength of the house. If that kind of person secures you, you are finished. The they, 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 Amrabas don't need to show gun. They'll keep their gun. What, why do you need gun? Baba? <laughs> because. <laughs> you say, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, mommy. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's just there to fill the gap and get food to eat. But people at that stage not have friends around them. Listen to me, you have to be careful. You must have. People will bury you. Who will bury you? If you die now, who? When you sleep and your coffin is laid there, you're lying in state, who do you expect to see around? If you have the right to judge the mind of people as they pass your Thank God he is dead. Or they'll be saying, wow, what a legend. Ah, death, how did you take this kind of person? You see, you need to calculate it. You need to build a system around yourself. You need to organize your life so that you are sure that when you are out of this place, you are If I die now, my works will still speak. God, it's not possible. There are people in places that will remember that this person. Do some crazy. You must. Generation can leverage on their experience their wisdom, their exposure. The challenge is some people lack moral
character of this girl will be different from my mother's one. People don't judge by knowing you. They judge from where you are coming. In if the people before you did not do anything, you plan that you are going to do something. Your name will make people, when they hear your name, they say, oh, God bless that man. Where is he now? Say, ah, maybe he passed on. So, wow. Wow. That man, they start telling you story of what you never knew. He was such a truthful man. Ah, they will give you an example. There was a day we kept something. We we're trying to check. He did not touch it. He walked with several people and he was a man of integrity. And that's the beauty of life. So you see all these people walking around and just living their life anyhow. Just living their, as if brain is somewhere else. You must walk with future and perspective in mind. Are we here together, church? Glory to God. Glory to God. So failure to raise your mentors can affect that stage too. So you, don't, you have a lot of wisdom, but nobody to drive it. So you are seeing all the things you can do, but you don't have energy. So raise people. As you start that business, raise people. As you are doing that organization, raise people. You meet leaders who dented their image through greed, sexual promiscuity. They usually leave an impact on the next generation. Solomon said a good name is rather to be chosen than what? Riches. Please don't use your moral weakness to block the way for your successors and your children. Don't use your weakness to block away. Anything that looks like a weakness, kill that weakness so that that weakness will not destroy doors for the next generation. Let it not be that they will go and look at your track record and say, this one, we cannot get people from this place. Are we here together now? Have you forgotten something that happened in the Bible one day? David woke up and he said, is there anybody remaining in the house of Saul that I will show him kindness, not for Saul's sake, for Jonathan's sake? What did Jonathan do? Jonathan was a man who stood by him, a loyal friend, a friend in time of trouble, a friend that said, I would rather you take the whole of the glory because I have seen that God is on your side. I don't mind being the servant following you, David. Everything God wants. And David looked at Jonathan and the Bible says he loved him like his own self. Their heart was knitted together. So many years after Jonathan died, after David He was lame on his feet. In the city of Lodeba, Lodeba was a place where he was, had no recognition. They have taken all the property of Saul, everything. They have confiscated all the property. And David was king at that time. And those things were in David's domain. And one day, David woke up. And the question he asked, I think first Samuel there about, he said, is there anybody remaining in the house of Saul so that I will show the person kindness for Jonathan's sick can you be a jonathan for your sons can you be the person that they will say ah is there anybody remaining in the family of the uh, whatever name and say i want to show somebody kindness there they say why because of this man so they went to bring mephibosheth from lodeba a lame man and the bible says they brought him he started eating on the same table with J david and ziba the guy that told him about him Ziba became an automatic servant. All his 32 children, they became servants to him. And from that day till the day he died, he ate as a royalty. Why? Somebody paid the price. Who are you paying price for? If you don't like yourself, like your children. If you don't like yourself well enough, just say for the sake of the next generation, I will not live like this. Glory to God. The last stage, I will round up my teaching today. Have I done justice to that stage? The last stage is the ages from 65 and above. At this stage of a person's life, it's quite unusual. It's quite unusual to meet people at this stage that don't have every single thing they are saying in Proverbs, in stories, they are sharing experiences. They may tell you one story 20 times. You will remember, I say, but it's so telling, you said it before. Say, this thing you are saying, you've said it before. He said, yes. I'm saying it again so that you will learn. To them, life has become about learning because they have learned all through their lives. So when they see young people running, where people are running away from, that's where they are running to. They say, ah, 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 who must say? That means, hmm, well, ah, if somebody had told me I won't go there, please don't go. And say, Baba, you don't, you know, this generation has changed. Listen to me. Systems don't change. The patterns of how things are done change. Nothing is new under the face of the sun. It's just that the way things are being done now, communication has been from day. When they were doing it from Nigeria, you have to travel. It was communication. When it was letter, it was communication. Now it is SMS, it's communication. So communication has not changed. It's the medium that has what? Changed. So things are not really changing. The mediums are changing. 
So some of the experiences of the, those people, they will still be needed to guarantee a good life now. Am I talking sense to somebody? I believe somebody is ruminating. you just reflecting and saying, ah, serious. This stage now is called the legendary stage where you become a living legend. There are some people who are alive today. Hmm? I heard that recently, was your passenger that went to see one particular person and he sat down in his house on the floor to greet him. He sat down. You can't stand. You can't kneel. You're kneeling. You can't do ballet. You sit. Babao. Ah. Encyclopedia of wisdom. This ones, if they tell somebody to close door against you, they will close it. With all pride, they will close it. Go walk out here. If you honor people at that level, you are setting yourself up for great honor. Don't assume that life is just like that. There are certain people who have paid their price in life. The systems of this world recognize them and see them as gatekeepers to the city. If you must enter the city and gain access, you must look for them. There are places you want to enter, they will say, go and meet that Baba. Anything he says is what? Final answer. They are legends. There are some people of their age, the same place, but they are not legends. They are just there too. Am I talking sense to somebody here? So you must understand that now. People in this season generally exhibit the trait of those from the other stages, but in greater dimension, greater wisdom, increased experience. Due to increased wisdom, they have greater understanding and are more patient. They are more patient. Can you see? They are more patient now at this stage. Why? They have seen many things. So they are they're just patient. They're just looking. To them, life is not so fast as you are thinking life is fast. Because they have seen many things. Am I making sense here now? To them, the wise ones at this stage, they are also learners. They know that they have acquired too much of knowledge, but they know that there are many things that this new generation of people know too. I don't mind learning from them. I want to be a lifelong learner. So this is how the ladder is. The man is at that stage of his life where he's a legend. He's pulling wisdom from all he has acquired all the years, but he's not failing to carry the next generation because he knows that when his eyes closes, not in death, if he cannot see and he still has his mind, this person does not have the experience he has, but he has eyes. Lead me. Tell me what you can see. I will tell you where the result is. So at that age, the person knows that for him to have eyes, he must rely on the past generation. Because now he's a dreamer. But those ones are visionaries. They are seeing visions. He is dreaming. Dreams are coming through for him. These ones are still seeing to the future. So he stands to leverage where he is to move to the next dimension of life. People at this stage begin to gather light. It dawns on them that they, are, they don't have much time to spend here anymore. They are more kind. In their attitude, in their behavior, they begin to position themselves very well because they know that they don't have all the years to spend here anymore. Am I talking to somebody here now? Generally, they have more time for relationships. You can sit down and gist with that kind of person for one hour. He doesn't have much work to do. He has retired from work. He's relaxed. They have all the time. They can share. They can do many things at that stage of their life. Now, they stay more with their grandchildren because their own children are very busy. So, you go and keep grandchildren with them. Say, Grandma, Grandpa, I come, you know. So, they are investing time watching the little children growing. Their own children are working. Their grandchildren are the ones that they are watching now. And they are thinking of many things they should have done they could not do. Once in a while, sit with those people. What you cannot learn in 30 years, you will learn in 30 minutes. What you cannot know in 30 years, you can't read it in 30 books, you will learn it in one conversation. Wisdom is profitable to do what? Direct. There are certain people I just sit and I just listen to everything. Do, when you go, they don't talk. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. No problem, sir. Thank you, sir. Two hours. They can tell you the same story. Don't be in a hurry. Any day you are going, just prepare yourself. If you, if you are hungry, carry your cooler. Just know that that day you will receive wisdom. When you are coming back, you too, you will know. That, ah, many. Then you now balance it with the mediums of today and see how you can leverage. Am I making sense here now? Am I helping somebody here now? So let me round up by telling you the challenges. Health challenges are predominant at that stage also. Then there are retired people. People formally retire from work because work provides a sense of importance. Many of them don't feel too important again, except those of them who have value that they are still adding to the society. Many don't feel, what am I doing again? Some of them will tell you things that we have done our own part. You know what? And then you, you are saying, we are looking up to the fathers. Let the fathers rise. The fathers are saying, we are looking up to you, sons. 
when we were young, we fought our battles. When we were young, we were on the street shouting, end SARS, end SARS. So now if there is a SARS, you go and end the SARS. It's not their work. They know that some things are wrong, but they don't have the energy to stop it. They can give you the wisdom to work with, but you don't expect them to run anymore. Why? The days have drawn near. They are closer to their grave than they know. They can't tell how close they are, but they sure know that seeing that they grew as babies, look at the wrinkles on their face. Look at the fact that they are no longer what they used to be. They know something somewhere is telling on them. Am I talking sense to somebody, church? Yes. So before now, a person must have created passive income for yourself so that you don't start depending on people. Listen to me now. Listen to me, church. Let me, I want to quickly look at, okay, I'm, like in five minutes, I'm going to round up. Listen, if you don't want to be an old beggar, old beggar, old beggar, at 70, 75, being a beggar is now. You must raise a system that is going to provide wealth for you for the future. You see how young people go everywhere, they are eating anything they see. They buy one bottle of champagne, 550,000. That's the money that can buy how many blocks of system. They don't have one land. You're driving a car of 7 million, you have not bought one land. Your foolishness level is high. Very high. Very high. You are living in a landlord's house. You have three cars. You are blocking all the tenants. No space. You don't have land. Do you know that if you have not had land on the face of the earth, you don't have space on earth yet? You don't have space on earth. The system of this world is that before you die, you must acquire some space. Acquire space on earth before you die. You don't have, listen to me, I'm saying it. Look at the children of Israel. They must transfer landed property to their next generation. If they don't have landed property, it shows that they don't have space. They are not the owners of that place. So everything you are doing as things are happening, you are just running up and down, enjoying yourself, catching your phone, and just, just remember that if you don't have any land, you are not landing well. Wisdom, Abby. you need more wisdom. May God help us in the name of Jesus. I'm saying it because somebody can start today. Somebody can be 60 and say five years to go. I must do something. You can even be 65 and tell yourself that, ah, since there is still small space and I can find strength, I'm going to find a way. I don't want to wake up and be calling my children. Hello, send the money now. Say, I will cost you. I will cost your children. No. Hey. That's not the will of God for any person. No. Live your own life. When your children are coming to your house, when they buy this watch, they buy this watch of 40k, 50k. As they are bringing it, you are smiling. They know that you even have this watch of 100k. When they collect gifts from you, they are collecting it and smiling. And say they are just doing their little bits as children. Because over the years of their life, they have acquired so much in wealth that if they leave and they tell you what your father left for you, you will need and say, Baba, your life is good forever. Baba, you nearly worship him. Live your life like that. That the next generation will look at and say, what kind of mother is this? They say, apart from all the property your father had, while we were together, your mother also said she wanted this for you. She wanted that. And they are reading will. As you are reading your parents' will, you are crying. Because all of a sudden, you became rich overnight. What kind of life do we want to live? We must be wise. We must be wise. Are we here together, church? Are you sure you're getting my gist? As a young leader who is yet to get there, wisdom should direct you as you plan ahead. Have a life outside work. Have a life outside your work. When you retire from that work, you need to know what next you are doing. Have a life outside your work. It might be your hobby. It might be a sport. It might be something. Have people you can relate with. One of the things that kill people at that age is isolation. They don't have people that they can relate with anymore. You must check it. Do you have that? Plan what you would love to do with the remaining part of your life. On wisdom and experience acquired over the years. Psalm 71. I'll read my three scriptures before I round up now. Psalm 71. Let me show us this. Psalm 71, verse 15 to 18. Look at what David said. Psalm 71, 15 to 18. Please be fast so that we can. Right. Psalm 71, 15 to 18. I will tell everyone about your righteousness all day long. I will proclaim your saving power though I am not your mighty deeds oh sovereign lord are just uh -huh. oh god you have taught me from my earliest childhood 
and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things. So from his childhood, now that he's old, he says he's constantly telling others. So at that stage, what are they doing? They are constantly telling others. Go ahead now. Of what you do. Now that I am old and gray, do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. Glory to God. It can be such an effective season for a person to maximize their stage. How? If you sincerely position yourself, you start mentoring the next generation. Parenting people, teaching people parenting techniques, teaching how to build lasting marriage, teaching how to build successful businesses, teaching how to pass on the baton to your successor. You can talk from experience and everybody is like, yes, sir, because they know you have it. Our parent, our political leaders that are supposed to be in that position today, many Abdul Salam Abu Bakr, Ebele Jonathan, Olusha Gombasan, Jerry Ghana, go on. They are supposed to have organized institutions for learning governance and politics where they can sit down and tell the next generation, see the mistakes we made. If you make it, you go wrong. But you see people in that cadence still struggling for power. Power that they cannot drive, they are struggling. They are supposed to be behind, point wisdom to somebody and say, anytime you have a challenge, you see 10 men who have ruled the nation before, made their mistakes and adjusted their lives. to go about this thing they say sit down and 10 people will sit down when they pour sense into you the nation will get direction you need elder statesmen not people who are dragging for power you know that they are not dragging the same thing you are dragging they are men who are pushed they have organized school this one will come and take issues that have to do with harnessing the military in the public because he was a military person and he will teach you that one how to manage military people another one will come how to teach you governance and how to guide against you know uh, what they call them um, Boko Haram and the rest and everything then you start learning that's what we need we don't need people who are old and dragging power with the next generation at that age the family and you say yes sir they can still be useful but because they think that without power, they will not be useful. What makes a man useful is not power. Wisdom is greater than power. A wise man can tie the hand of a giant. It's just to provide a technique, he will be down. Am I making sense here now? So at this stage, you can still be useful. Don't think that at this stage, you are useless. No, your children still need you. They need to leverage. One of the struggle, one of the struggle older leaders face at this stage is loneliness, isolation. They feel they are no longer useful. As such, they want to hold on to power. It does not happen only in politics. It happens in church systems. It happens in business organizations. It happens everywhere. But I believe that the next generation of people who are rising and they are saying that we will do something to an extent. I will say, keep doing it while watching. You say, you made mistakes. You say, okay, sir. Why? Because we have fought the fight. They would have said, we keep, I'm looking forward to those stages of my life. I'm really looking forward to those stages of my life where I can be a salt to the next generation. And I hope that every one of us also are looking forward to such stage in our lives. It is important to be a lifelong learner. Stand your ground and be everything God wants you to be. We're going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 12 together. And the last verse I'm going to give us where we round off. Can we stand up? Let's read it together so that because of time, we're going to do that together. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 1. If you have your gadgets, you can read. Don't rely on the screen in case you may not be able to see. Especially those of us outside, you may not be able to see clearly. So I would like you to rely on your gadgets. You have your phone, you have your Bible, hard copy, soft copy. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. You can follow us with any other translation, but I'm reading from the, um, the Living Bible, sorry. The Living Bible, TLB. The Living Bible. This, this is... An, Okay, but I'm going to read from um, TLB here. Don't let... 
Honor him in your youth before the evil years come when you no longer enjoy living. It will be too late then to try to remember him when the sun and the light and moon and stars are dim to your old eyes and there's no silver lining left amongst your cords. For there will come a time when your limbs will tremble with age. Your strong legs become weak and your feet will be too few to do their work. And there will be blindness too. Then let your lips be tightly closed while eating when your feet are gone. And you will awaken at dawn with the first note of the bird. But you yourself will be deaf and tuneless with wavering voice. You will be afraid of heights and of falling. A white-haired, withered old man dragging himself along without sexual desire. Standing at death's door and nearing his everlasting home as the mourners go along the street. Yes, remember your creator now while you are young. Before the silver cords of your life snap and the golden bow is broken. Before the pitcher is broken at the fountain and the wheel is broken at the cistern. Then the dust returns to the earth as it was. And the spirit returns to God who gave it. All is futile, says the preacher, utterly futile. But then, because the preacher was wise, he went on teaching the people all he knew. And he collected proverbs and classified them. For the preacher was not only a wise man, but a good teacher. He not only thought them what he knew to the people, but thought them in an interesting manner. The wise man's words are like gods that spur to action. They nail down important truths. Students are wise who master what their teachers tell them. But my son, be warned, there's no end of opinions ready to be expressed. Trust him. Here is my commandment. For this is the entire duty of man. For God will judge us of everything we do, including every hidden thing, good or bad. This series must have been a blessing to somebody's life. In Acts, New King James Version, now you can put King James Version, Acts chapter 13, verse 36. This scripture should be a revelation to somebody. Acts chapter 13, verse 36. King James Version, please. Acts chapter 13, verse 36. I will never live a wasted life. I will never live a cheap life. I will never live a small life. Can we read it together? Acts chapter... King James Version. Okay. You, we, 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 we also try that translation. Let's go now. own generation by the will of God fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and he saw corruption. My focus is David after he has served the purpose of God in his generation. Now that translation is said after David has served the purpose of God in his generation, he went to his bed, he slept and he went to meet his ancestors. After he has served the purpose of God in his generation, after he had served the purpose of God in his generation. Whose purpose are you serving? What purpose are you serving? Whose purpose are you serving? What purpose are you serving? After David has served the purpose of God in his own generation, by the will of God, he fell on his bed. That this, see how David died? He sat down. They carried his leg on the bed. He lied down and he said goodbye. After he had served, the purpose of God in his generation. May you serve the purpose of God in your generation. You will serve God's purpose in this dispensation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can you lift up your hands and say, Father, I receive wisdom to serve your purpose. In the name of Jesus. I manifest the wisdom of Christ. At 33 and a half, Jesus finished everything because he knew he didn't have much time. He was fast enough to do what he needed to do. Raised successors, handed over to successors. They sat to learn from him. What people do at 65 and 70, they just did it at 33. Elders, Pharisees, Sadducees, they gathered to hear from the wisdom of Jesus. 
Keto Rabanama Shakatalaba. I will never settle for a small life. I will never be small in my life. And no Sabarana man. With your purpose for my life. Every day of my life, I refuse. I refuse to live a small life. Zeto Rabalaba Shanama Rogodolobo Senedesh. E sobranama shako tayaga zuzu brenetesh. Lehizia branan do rabashana masoska branata. Ashaneke sokete leboshka. It's never too late to wake up. It's never too early to start. From life's first cry to his final breath, your life must be a voice. Your life must be a testimony. Your life must change your Would you be a voice, positive voice, in the next 10, 15 Help me. I don't want to live an ordinary life. David said, teach me to number my days. That's what we just did. Teach me so that I can count numbers of my age so that I will apply my heart to wisdom. For wisdom is profitable. Thank you, Jesus. If you know you have not given the whole of your heart to Jesus, you have not started. No matter how much you follow the whole of the principles I have taught, if Jesus is outside it, everything you do will be earthly relevant, eternally useless. Eternal relevance is in Jesus, the Son of the living God. Eternal relevance is more important than relevance here on earth. Why? Everything you do here will be rewarded at the other side. Don't let anybody deceive you. Read Revelation up to 10 times. He was saying it again. Behold, I come quickly. Up to five times. Rabbi. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is me. Give everybody a contract. When you sleep in death, there will be another world where you'll be open to. Everybody will be on a large queue. All believers. Unbelievers will be on their queue. Believers will be on their queue. Rewards will be given. Awards will be given. According to your, the, the level of your alignment with God's purpose. Not according to how rich you were. Not according to how many things you did for yourself. According to how much you aligned with the purpose of Christ, the head of the church. In your, parent, in your parenting, find alignment. In everything you do, find alignment. So that when they are looking at your alignment, they will say, truly, you are aligned. Come, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the rest of your Lord. I will not just enter heaven and just be strolling. Anya. So I will be useful here on earth and in heaven. Do you know that they will hand over cities and kingdoms to people? Uh, they see, people don't understand anything about eschatology. If people come to church, they don't know anything about end times, about what will happen at the end. That's how they are living anyhow. If time passed, works will be recorded and there will be captains of hundreds. In the next kingdom, there will still be captains. God believes in leadership and hierarchy. Every time, in time and eternity. We position yourself well. Young people, I want to charge you from the bottom of my heart. We can't fail the next generation. There's a generation that has failed God. Only a few are standing. And God says, I need people who will help to make things get better. And each time a generation fails God, he raises another. God forbid that the next generation that was raised messes up again. And guess what God does? He continues replacement culture. Replacement culture. If you read through the Bible, you see replacement culture. May you not be replaced. There are some people under the sound of my voice. You are the person that God has put in that your family to change things. God forbid that you'll be sleeping when you should be doing something. I'm, I'm saying it. You know why I'm saying it? And I'm too sure. I'm sure of this more than I'm sure of my name. Because when God called me, I'm supposed to raise people who are generational deliverers. 
you are that man you are that woman when they mention your name it will be definition of wealth in your family it will be definition of greatness as soon as they call your name huh? what comes in the mind of people is great man great woman they are here but your positioning now will determine that are we here together father we thank you thank you for your sons and daughters we have heard your word we are guided by your word we receive a listening ear today and a heart of understanding let this guide us that at the end of our lives here on earth we we'll open our eyes to another